Okay, Green Toe Palacio, let's, let's talk, let's talk, uh, first off, what, what is Dylan Palacio up to? Did you graduate, first off, for, from, from Cornell? Man, I, I, uh, I'm still waiting to, for them to email me and be like, hey, we made a mistake, we weren't even supposed to admit you in the first place, but I, uh, <laughs> Uh, nonetheless, yes, I did. I did. Very emotional. Congratulations, by the way. Listen, I, uh, you know, I, when people say congratulations, whatever it is, I feel like a lot of people go, like, oh, thank you, and then they, like, move on. Like, it just seems like a formality, but, like, I can't stress how, like, significant it is to me and my family for me to walk across that stage. Like, to be honest, like, I'm, I didn't really want to even go to graduation because I knew how emotional it was going to be for me to see my friends and, like, everyone moving on next chapter of their life. And when I was there, like, it was big, it was for my mom, you know, and my grandmother. You know, my grandmother says to me, Dylan, yo tengo gato en la pantalones. And if you don't speak Spanish, you understand that I'll tell you what it means. It means, you don't know what this means to me. Like, this is a dream. Like, she doesn't speak English, and yet I'm at one of the most prestigious schools in the country. So, some would argue even in the world. Where is she from? She's from Uruguay. Um, Uruguay, that, and that's who you represent when that's you who I wrestle. That's who I wrestle for whenever I... World just, championships, yeah, right? If, if I if I do decide to compete. But this year in Paris, I asked you, you don't know if Paris is on the table yet. No, I, Paris is definitely not on the table. Like, for a lot of people who didn't know, like, I've been tremendously hurt. Um, emotionally and physically like I was so ready for this year and like you know open message to anyone life happens and I was in such a great place and like I was so ready to like take the world by storm and like, I had so much behind me and then like this like it was all taken from me like unfairly and like honestly like, I, like, I could cry right now what was the day what happened what happened when you hurt your knee well, even before that, like, first the mental, like, my best friend, best friend in the world, Jacob Pinsky, like, grew up with him, kindergarten, he's been my boy, like, everyone asks what L40 means, but let me tell you what the biggest thing means to, to about that and, and about me, it's friendship, real friends, so the real end. And when you get a call like that, like, everything slows down, like, I broke down on my knees, I was crying in the middle of a soccer field, right under the bridge in New York City, and, like, my life would never be the same and people want to always tell me like yo time heals all wounds then like it'll be all right that's you know i don't want to curse but like it's, it's bullshit it doesn't like it puts a hole in your heart and the only thing you can do is move on and, and, and learn to adjust to this new life this new life without that person and let me tell you something like it was really hard for me i wanted to go to the worlds at 155 and he died in october like i was a floral student in some semesters i had like a 3.7 and my grade point average started dipping doing bad in my classes, everything came back to that. I had so much pain and I just had to leave school for a little bit. And I still like pulled out pulled out good grades, like I got B minuses, but I was at home for a lot of the time. Missed the 155 worlds, you know, and then wrestling, like trying to come back into it. I had like weight problems because my knee. How did you hurt your knee though? Like, Initially I really don't know. It could have been the wear and tear, but at Harvard was like the the main like boom, the pop. Dual meet? Yeah, I was wrestling with a guy at 165, and like, and that th at this point I thought I was gonna go 165, and I was like, all right, this is gonna be the move, and like I'm trying to get up, and my knee just literally bopped out. I heard a pop, I was scared, like I was like, all right, this is the end of like my career, and like it, it was super super hard for me, and Cole sat me down, and you know, thank goodness for Coach Cole, you know, you gotta value the people in your life who you might not even like. You know, and that's not saying that I don't like Coach Cole. You know, I'm also very fortunate that I do like Coach Cole. But people who will tell you what it is, 100%, 100%, being honest about a decision that they want you to make or what's best for you. And, and, and yes, people should support you, what you want to do, but they'll also let you know when you got too much blinders on, man. And Coach Cole sat me down and was like, listen, Dylan, I think your best shot's at 157. Like, I think we're the best team at 157. Like, you could do it. Like, you could make history. You could come back. You could you could do it for your friend. You could do these things. Like, you don't give up. Don't give up. Don't leave this place. I was at a point where I wanted to leave school. Like, forget wrestling. I didn't. I just wanted to leave school. You know? a semester lot. Yeah. Cornell. I was, I was that confident in walking away from everything. And I was being a little bit selfish. What it meant to my mom, to my dad, to my Uncle Steve, who pushed me to get there in the first place. I really wanted to leave. And you could ask any coach. I knew this was gonna happen because I'm so, friendship means everything to me. It's all you have in this life, really. And money comes and goes, all that comes and goes. And also there's an inequality. So like, if you have someone who's super rich and someone's super poor, 
that's not an even playing field. So people are always going to be on the equal level. But let me tell you something where everyone starts on a clean slate. It's love and friendship. No matter how poor you are, how rich you are, everyone gets the same opportunity to have the most amazing friendship, the most amazing love. And in that essence, with me, I knew what it was going to do to me. I, tell, I, I, I might even have it on this phone. I'll show you after. I send a text to all three of my coaches, Donnie, Mike, Damien, and Coach Cole. And I said, don't let me leave the path. And this was minutes after my friend died. Just to show you where my heart was, where my, my mind was, my goals were, before it all sunk in, before the world just seemed to fade away from me, I sent that to them. And were, were you on the soccer team at that point? No, no, no. This was at, on a soccer field when I was playing club soccer. The soccer it. team didn't do that great this year. You played on the soccer team yes. for a minute. Though. Yeah, I did. I a did season, play varsity. One played, season, right? Well, technically, I was on for two seasons. Um, we did really good my first year, and the second year, I was still kind of hurt um, coming back from my shoulder because I got hurt in the round of 12 twice. Well, the All-American on twice because one year was going to be a fourth hit. Both at 65. Yeah, both at 65. Um, and then I came back both times and then I hurt my shoulders so I couldn't play my junior year. It's soccer off the table. That's something I've, I've, I know you're a soccer player and you got a fa your family's soccer people, right? I embrace opportunity, man. Like I, You could go another year of soccer at Cornell if you want to. I mean, I really, I really could. You actually, because it's plus one. Yeah, yeah, I really could. Um, I could consider is, is it. I mean, if the world championships are out potentially in Paris, we could I, maybe see you on the soccer team? I don't, well, this is the thing. It's not even that I'm done with wrestling. It's that my body, like I said, like it's physically messed up my shoulder, my knee, my hip. Like it, it all needs to be repaired because of what I went through this season. Like after, like I said, the mental stuff, then my fist, my knee. I literally, that, that tape at NCAAs that was on my knee, some people thought it was a sleeve. That was literally almost like a cast. I didn't take that off all three days. And it was at a point by the third day, I couldn't even run. I couldn't even walk. Like even now, like, my flexibility is so bad because my hamstrings and my hips are compensating. They're fighting each other. Yeah. So I I went from putting my head behind foot behind my head wrestling in the funk to being like uncomfortable with stretching, and it's really really uh it's new for me. But uh, I'm not putting anything off the table, man. I don't run from opportunity or challenges like I completely I embrace them because of what it could tell me about myself, whether I fail or I don't. Like, I'll go to the world. I'll wrestle some guy from Azerbaijan who says he's 20 but should be 40 and somebody in a doping agency may, may or may not have disappeared. Like, I'll wrestle that person. I don't care. I don't care. I don't feel, I don't fail. It makes you dangerous. You know that, right? What? To, that makes you dangerous. That mentality makes you dangerous to, to, to the Russians, to the Azerbaijanis. That literally makes you very dangerous. Dude, I really don't, uh, I don't, 